All right, you know we had to stop by DJI. I mean, you know DJI. You're listening to us on DJI through this whole show. That's how dependable we find their, everything that they do. And they're known for drones heavily. And I got Ferdinand with me because the Inspire 2, massive. Inspire 3, exponentially massive. I can't even get over it. Full frame. I, I'm jumping ahead of this. Walk me, I mean, really, everything got just that much better from the FPV part to the full frame sensor, 8K, 75 frames per second. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna steal everything from this guy, but like, okay. go ahead, go, go. So, go, go. <laughs> but you know, one thing we capped is the exact same form factor. Yes. So it's still ultra portable, and that's like what made the Inspire series so popular. So you can still take it on board of an aircraft, travel with it. Okay. Do that, try that with a heavy lifter, no way. So that's still, you know, you can still recognize this as an Inspire. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a huge, uh, benefit that we basically kept. Uh, except of that, there's a lot of new things under the hood. Uh, one of the most notable features now is if the landing gear is down, we have a tilt boost mode, so it has like this V shape. Uh, it also lifts the aircraft nose. What it does, uh, what, it, what it does, it help. Um, it can tilt the camera up to 80 degrees. Okay. While still maintaining the ability to shoot completely Even straight to minus. Down. Right. So you know that there's some drones where you can top mount and bottom mount the camera, yeah. but you always have to decide. If you top mount it, it's already you cannot shoot down. Yeah. If you bottom mount it, you cannot shoot up. And while you're shooting, you cannot change, obviously. So here you can go from this all the way to, as I said, 80 degrees. That is massive. Um, in the upward position, you will see the transformation mechanism is uh, heavily improved. It now change the shape back to an H yeah. and it also has like a steeper angle. So we even have higher camera angles in this um, so you configuration. So you're clearing. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. the clearance is better. Even on aggressive moves, you get less landing gear in the picture. So that's a massive upgrade on the transformation mechanism. And this is just the physical, right? This is exactly. just like the outside. Yeah. On the inside, you've got massive roof. The FPV got exactly. a bigger sensor, yes, more let's field talk, of yeah. view. Let's talk FPV. So the FPV camera, which you also can see here, uh, massive upgrade, larger sensor, low light capabilities are insane. So you can fly at night, can navigate at night, just need some light sources. Um, it is low latency image transmission. And a longer transmission, right? It's, Significantly. Exactly, we'll talk about that later, but 161 degrees FOV, so yeah. massive. And that's exactly the FOV you're used to from the normal F uh, FOV cameras. Yep. So O3 or previous generation FOV cameras, that's the FOV you have. So as a pilot that is used to FPV, this is perfect. So now you can actually fly the i3 FPV. And you have to get uh, used to it, it's there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you look at a lot of the action-packed shots you see in our launch video, most of them were flown using the FPV camera. So I find myself as an FPV pilot, as a drone pilot, flying way less line of sight and more FPV because you're more accurate, you're way more confident. Oh, that's interesting. And that's the interesting thing. You are flying way more confident now. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Talking about confident and uh, flying safely, we integrated a 360 degree omnidirectional obstacle um, sensing system in the arms. So there's no, not that weird bracket anymore that we had on the i2. Oh, okay. Upward, downward, and 360 all around. And the cool thing is you can fully configure it now. So um, if you're an expert professional pilot and you don't want the drone to stop or divert, right. bypass, you still can benefit from the system because you can configure audio and visual warnings on the remote controller, like on a park assist on a car. And that's massive. If you're backing up to prepare for a shot to get in position, FPV camera pointing to the front, you back up. So you can exactly place the drone with confidence, you know, because you have your park assist, basically. Right, right, right. And really, you don't have to worry about, you can, you're basically overriding a, a little bit of the safety to get it to where you exactly. need it as a pro, because you, you can, can handle you it. You can even configure um, the threshold where the warning comes right. up and stuff like That's that. That's cool. Massive upgrade. Um, another big upgrade is, you already pointed it out, the main camera. That's so crazy. We, we're talking full frame now. It's a purposely built sensor. You won't that, will find that on any other camera. Um, 8.1K up to 75 frames in 8.1K, gotcha. up to 120 frames in 4K, 14.7 stops of dynamic range. Okay, that's nice. So you can keep up with the DL very mount. best of it. It is DL mount. Okay. Um, we have dual native ISO. Um, at 25 and 24, it's 800 and 4,000, so you can basically shoot low light scenarios without any problems. Beautiful. Yeah. So uh, you you're absolutely at par with the top-notch cinema cameras out there. And that's 
uh, that's the most important thing for an all integrated drone because basically the camera dictates if you're allowed on a set or not. Absolutely. If the camera doesn't meet the expectations of right. the DP, the production, yeah, you cannot go there. Right. So this is a massive upgrade we had to do. Um, you take away a lot of limitations in every aspect here, it seems exactly. like. Exactly. Yeah, and, and what about the flight time? Flight time is pretty much uh, similar to I2, but taking into account that we fly a full frame sensor now, this is a big achievement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have updated batteries. As I said, they're still under 100 watts. Okay. We didn't want to go over 100 watts so gotta, because we still wanted to keep it transportable, you know. Yeah, because you this can't fly a with a certain size exactly. battery. Yeah. Over 100 watts, you cannot take it on an airplane. We want to kept, keep it under, and that's why the flight time is pretty much the same, but as I said, it's a full frame sensor now. I mean, um, because it's a full frame sensor, we also introduced one new lens that's the 18 mil. Okay. Because the previous 16 mil was only for Super 35. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you still have four lenses, and we will also introduce a telephoto lens later. Yeah, I mean, it's an all system too. I mean, you're going from exactly. this to the 4D and yeah. everything like that, and back and yeah. forth. It's incredible. Yeah. So wow. another huge upgrade, you already touched it. Everything's image. a huge yeah. upgrade. You hear this guy? <laughs> huge upgrade, massive is, upgrade, enormous, I'm huge. I, what, what, what should I say, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, next big upgrade is, is the image transmission. Yeah, yeah, that um, I want to talk about. 15 kilometers, which is like around Huge. nine miles. Huge. And you know, some people may ask, I will never fly that far away. Sure, but it also means that if you fly in uh, places where you have a lot of, you know. Uh, obstructions. Uh, obstructions, yeah, yeah. you fly in a forest, you can fly with more confidence. Right. You have less image breakup, image quality heavily improved lower latency, so that's massive. And because we're using our latest image transmission technology uh, called O3 Pro, okay. we're also enabling, and that's, sorry, another massive upgrade, the pilot and the gimbal operator to be in separate places. That's On cool. the i2, maybe you remember you always had to stay together because there was a direct connection between the pilot and the gimbal remote. Yeah. That was actually pretty cumbersome on set now. The gimbal operator could stand at the end of the hall and the pilot could stand in the other end of the hall. Yeah. And that's big because as a pilot, you constantly have to move around, right? Uh, while the gimbal operator most, uh, most likely stays at the DP director. So that's big. And another, sorry, another big upgrade <laughs> is um, we're basically unlocking um, our DJI ecosystem with O3 Pro. So you can use the hybrid monitor that you use from the HD transmission or the Ronin 4D okay. to connect our master wheels. So you can connect master wheels to control the gimbal uh, with the gimbal endpoint. So this is something a lot of DOPs always ask for because wheels still have the edge over normal uh, remote controls yeah. in some areas, you know, and now we're flexible. What you also can do you can use the Ronin 4D hand grips. Oh, very cool. Um, the cool thing on that is, so with the joystick, you can control the gimbal, and here you can change the focus. Talking of focus. <laughs> His arms are getting tired, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> His arms are getting tired. Um, we also um, support our three-channel focus, follow focusing. Oh, very cool. Unit. So you can connect it to the hybrid monitor, so you can even work in a three-operator uh, setup. Well, I mean, the whole ethos here seems freedom for the user, yeah. system and reliability, and exactly. that transmission thing, I just want to harp on that a little bit, because if you have the range, it means you have more powerful transmission closer, which means more reliability. What's right. the point of any of this yeah. if it's not coming back, right? Exactly. You got, I think people get into the numbers and not the practicality, yeah. you know? so. Look, we can go on forever about this. Links down below. This guy's gonna still keep talking when I walk away. But the reality do, is, this is a massive, I mean, this, you can't understate what happened here. I really can't. Hey, did I show you the new remote already? <laughs> it's weatherproof now. Of course it's weatherproof. Of course and, it's weatherproof. Oh, hot swappable batteries. Okay, that's cool, Fernando. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Still runs? Yeah, still runs, yep. Yeah. Hot swappable. All, all day, you don't have to power it down. Leave it on all set. Hot swappable here, here as well. You don't have to power down the remote. You have drill. to leave something for the Inspire 4. You know that, right? No, uh, that, uh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> no, listen, I can't thank you enough for this walkthrough. I mean, there, it really welcome. is. There is so much to this. So if you're looking at this, links below. Check out all the specs. Fernand, thank you so you're much. Welcome. Really appreciate thank it. You so much. All right, you can turn the propellers back on your speakers, <laughs> all right? <laughs> bye bye. I have to stop by Aperture. Every year we stop by Aperture, and I got Brandon with me because they're actually nominated for product of the year with the 150C and the 300C Amarans. Last year we saw the 600C, which is a monster. These are, I'm gonna call them more accessible versions, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah, So exactly. we're looking at model lights that are color. Mm -hmm. 
Here's yeah. where you talk. This is, yeah, this is where I talk. No worries, no worries. So the 150C and 300C, exactly. We Last year, we had the 600C Pro, and it has all the features you could possibly get want out of a light like that. It has the weatherproofing, it has the Lumen Radius here next, it has PartNet, it has SAC, it has battery plates. It has everything you could possibly need, but... It's up that, there. It's up there. Yeah, it's yeah. it's twenty five hundred dollars. So for everyone who wants to start getting into using these types of lights, using full color lights in with Bowen's mount in a point source form factor, that's what these guys are for. This guy's only like I don't know fifty percent. Yeah, it's, right it's now. not even that. Yeah. These the one fifty C and three hundred C come in at much more of affordable price point, but it still has a lot of the core features that a lot of our audience needs in terms of the Bowen's mount. So these are RGB WW full color point source Bowen's mount LED lights, and it has a, a lot of adjectives. And it's because they can do so many things with their super simple and unique design. And with no control box, we wanted to make sure that the design was a lot simpler and more intuitive for our users. So we took away the control box, built the units and the controls right into the light fixture, right onto the back of the light fixture, so you can just swap around. Like I want to swap between CCT mode, I want to swap back to. Uh, HSI mode, adjust my hue and saturation. Everything's on the back of the light. Yeah, so, so instead of in line, right? Instead of having another part, like this is what you're gonna pack. Exactly. And that's pretty much it. You have this light, control, and power supply, and that's pretty much it. And of course, if you do need to arm it out, you need to put it in place you can't reach it. That's when you have Citus Link app control. So again, the most popular light in the film industry, the lighting app in the film industry right now. So Citus Link app control gives you the ability to adjust all of these and add effects and use Magic Program. Citus Link is actually controlling this entire booth right now. We yeah. have no DMX running at all. Yeah, and it's pretty great because this is where you start realizing where the philosophy of brand is gone after so many years, right? They evolved and they've given you so many options for the fixtures, but a system to work in, right? It's no longer what will match, what will work with. It's just like, ah, I'm just filming now. Exactly. And that's what, that's what these are for. We're supposed to try and get these out of the way, make sure that our users can use our other lights to get the shot. Because that's not the day what matters. Getting the shot as, as simple of a method as possible. Uh, that's what we designed the simplicity of the Amaran lights for us. That's why it's simple, yeah, low yoke, super, super simple design, packs away super simply with like four pieces. So two options, right? 150, 300, depending on what you need. And of course, there's a lot of accessories, right? Exactly. We just introduced alongside these two new accessories, the first Amaran softbox and the first Amaran spotlight. Yes. You're probably watching B-roll that right now. So we just wanted to cover it because one, you guys are always putting out something new at yeah. NAB. Two, the 600C was awesome, but I really do think some people are like, one day. This yeah. is not one day, this is today. Now. Yeah, this is now. Yeah. I think everyone is super excited because this guy, the 150C, comes in at 359 only. That's $10 more than the 200XS. And the 300C is 569 That's like 65% of the 300X from yeah, Aperture. Yeah. So yeah. these come in at cra in crazy, incredible price points, and they'll be ready in about a month or so. They'll be shipping in May. Links down below for all the specs. Brandon, thank you so much. Of course, the brother, man. Thank I'll get, you. I know I'll see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>All right, so NAB 2023 means we have to stop by this massive Black Magic Design booth because they always have something popping, and this is no different. I got Dan with me today because you got so many various things, but I want to focus on a few key ones. You've got new switches, new stuff with DaVinci Resolve, uh, new cameras. Like, let's talk about some stuff. Sure, you know, for us, it's always about we have so many product families. We're getting a lot of new things out the door. And like you said, there's so many things to see, so there's going to be more than we're going to go through today. But I want to hit a few of those highlights yeah. you mentioned. So one of the first things we'll talk about is a couple new camera updates we have. Uh, first, we have our new uh, 12K OLPF. This is an optical low-pass uh, filter version of our 12K camera. 12K camera is already really super exciting. Can shoot, obviously, 12K, 8K, 6K. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. <laughs> but what we found is all these folks that are going out and they're starting to do virtual effects and uh, you know plates and they're doing virtual sets, they, you know, they need to have that optical low-pass filter. It's going to help with their Moriae patterns. They're going to use these uh, really high-resolution uh, lenses now. And this is gonna help us also, these cameras are now Netflix certified. That was right. kind of a tick box that had, to be, had to be done there. So we're gonna still continue to offer that 12K camera, but we'll have the new OLPF version of the camera that's shipping this week. So that's one really exciting announcement on the yeah. camera front. With, with more resolution comes more responsibility. Like they, they're actually, supporting the resolution, not just putting out uh, the ability. That's right, and some people don't want that OOPF, so that's why yes. we're gonna still, and that's a very common thing you see out there. So yeah. those are two like great things that are gonna be out there. And then like a really quick update, we did an update for our really popular pocket cameras to be able to actually shoot vertical video. So now like your phone, you can turn it, all the menus go, it puts it in the metadata. And this is great for just like people who are doing TikTok and YouTube shorts. Half our audience just groaned and rolled their eyes, but yeah, like vertical video is a completely thing, a complete thing that you have to offer a client these days. If you want to exist and assimilate and move forward. You can't just do the, the set piece. You have to do the supplemental 
uh, content, and it's it's vertical. That's right. And Shorts. And these are things that we had already added into DaVinci Resolve, which brings me to our DaVinci Resolve 18.5 up. Huge, huge update. It's a huge update, and there's so many things in there that are, again, like quality of life improvements, being able to speed things up, this, all this talk to text, being able to get subtitles out of the text, getting you to have automatic AI edits based off of getting your dialogue out of there. Like these are huge improvements in quality of life to people, but everything from just our fusion pages being updated, Fairlight pages, our cut page, we had a ton of new features in, and it's not necessarily because we need to make the cut page that much better on the desktop, but we have our iPad version of Resolve that has become hugely popular, not because people are doing necessarily all their work, but again, like for some people, that's a really quick way to do a quick cut. For other people, like that's how they want to do all of their previews, or that's how they want to do all their, and it's just, a, it's hard to make, these products that are right for everybody, but like that's the big challenge we have is, hey, Resolve can use, be used by the highest end colorist, but it can be used by you know that kid that's in high school making their first film, and that's always been our goal. Yeah, I feel like Blackmagic made a real stamp with making production accessible. That's and right. And now you're looking at home production, especially since the pandemic, streamers, people starting channels, and yeah, that kid's gonna have an iPad before a $4,000 Mac, right? That's right, and the best part is, once you start on that Blackmagic, hey, I bought a pocket camera, hey, I use Resolve, like that sets you up for the rest of your career. Like, now yeah, you know yeah, yeah. all the workflow, now I know all the production capabilities, and all that stuff, and you might bounce around to some other tools, but like you have access to those tools like we never had 20 years ago. And beginning to end, camera to post and that, all the way and through. And that's what separates yeah. Blackmagic from a lot of people. And the last thing I just wanted to touch on, a couple new ATEM updates. Which, Obviously, Which we're really actually very excited about. You know, we have this broad, broad range of ATEMs from our little ATEM mini pros, very popular, up to our higher ATEM constellations. A couple weeks ago, we launched our new ATEM Television Studio HDs. Okay. These were our eight input SDI uh, all-in-one switchers. And when we launched those, there was a lot of great feedback, but everyone's like, where's your Ultra HD one? So we had that coming down the pipe. We're showing it at the show. It's just like our, our HD versions, but it is obviously Ultra HD. We've added a new joystick to be able for some positioning thing. The one thing we didn't do is it doesn't have an ISO version, meaning you can't record all okay. of your outputs, but we did bump up to 10 aux outputs, so it gives you some new flexibility. So we're showing that at the show, and then the Constellations are the big rack units that have the many different SDI on the back. We're doing an Ultra HD of our 4ME version there, so that's another update. Kind of helps fill out our product line, and you know we think it's going to be an exciting way for people to have more choices in those families this, of products. This is pretty much you guys catching up from everything that's just happened. And, that, and that's really yeah. what's happened for us. Like a lot of folks, we've gone through this pandemic process. We got out some products that were really important for us, and these are some other products that we're just kind of filling out our lineup, adding some more functionality, quality of life, and we're really feeling good because while some of these products aren't necessarily for everybody, we have so many things yeah. that there's usually something that someone goes, well, that's the thing I really needed and other things are maybe not as important, but when you have the breadth of products that Blackmagic does, it's it's a good chance for us to kind of get caught up on all of these different products. Yeah, I just always like the fact that you know you can grow with Blackmagic. Like, if, it, if it's Blackmagic and Blackmagic, it will just work. And, it, and that's, we always want to be flexible and let people have options, but we always want to show people the benefits of being able to, hey, I'm using a Blackmagic camera with DaVinci Resolve and I don't have to conform and I can go ahead and do all my delivery and I can work with an ATEM and bring all those ISOs into a project. You don't have to, but it makes it but a, quali there. a quality of life. So really excited to be here at NEV talking to people and hope you know a lot of people are excited about what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna put all the links to everything down below. So if you're looking at anything that Blackmagic has announced at NAB, go ahead, hit the links in the description down below. And don't forget to check out DaVinci Resolve. There is a free version. If you're not familiar with it, now's a good time to check it out for free. And if you do need the other features out of it, it's, it's there. Absolutely. Listen, Dan, thank you so much. This yeah, is like a, I'm out of breath, man. But it's it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Thanks, man. All right, we had to stop by the legendary Sennheiser, and you'll notice I did a mic change. Literally, I'm talking to Tobias here because this is the new DP835, which is replacing the previous unit because now we're fully digital, right? I'm going to hand you the mic literally. Thank you. Yeah, so, so this is actually the digital... Uh, version and the successor of the 112P sets, EWDP. Um, one of the main benefits of the system is it's as easy to use. Anyone can operate it. It's a, a UHF system aiming at filmmakers, ENG crews, uh, content creators. Uh, it comes with an app. It has a dynamic range of 134 dB, uh, 1.9 milliseconds of latency. Um, Runtime of the uh, receiver is over seven hours. On the transmitter, it's uh, 12 hours. Um, uh, the batteries can be recharged in the receiver. We have a very clever mounting concept. It's actually magnetic stackable, as you can see here. So if you need two receivers, just stack it on top. It comes with a mounting plate, which fits onto your camera, uh, and you're ready to go. 
Yeah, and you're listening to it inside one of the most signal-heavy places you could think of, NAB, a broadcasting show, and you're hearing the sound quality for yourself right here. And you were telling me it's 100 meters, how it's far distance, and they were testing it down this hall and hearing things crystal clear, and you're hearing it right now. So we just wanted to stop by and show you guys an update to a basically a staple microphone in this industry from a legendary brand like Sennheiser, and you can hear it for yourself, like I said. Tobias, thank you so much. All right, so NEB, got to stop by Tilta, and they've got an evolution to the nucleus, right? So we're looking at the nano here, right? Nick? Yes, that, that <laughs> this is, is where correct. you so go? This, <laughs> is, this is the nucleus nano too. Um, we have made a, a couple big improvements. The first most noticeable one would be the screen, but the kind of main points of this is this is now a multi-channel lens control system. Focus, iris, and zoom. You have the wheel here. You have a zoom rocker on the wheel itself, and then you have an expanded handle that is gonna give you a dial, which you can control iris with, and also some control for DJI motors. You have camera oh, wow. control via USB-C, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, allowing you to adjust settings like ISO on the fly, as well as some programmable lens information. And it's it's quick, you. if you notice that, it's quick. It's not like you're waiting for it to load. It's not a lag when you're switching from screen to screen, too. So yeah, that's really absolutely, nice. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so it allows you to load in, uh, preset some lens information, meaning it's going to save time on set when calibrating, getting up and running. Um, there, there's a lot of other smaller features. The, the firmware has been really kind of overhauled. Um, but in general, the motors are a little bit smaller, a little bit stronger. The system is generally much closer to Nucleus M at the same starting price point of the original Nano, which is $299 for the hand wheel and one motor. And it's light weight too it's like Fairly. the whole thing a nano for real nano like actually getting lightweight so right there you're watching an, one of the most popular systems i think out there the nucleus evolving even further cool nick thank you so much man. absolutely thank you